welcome to another pro tips. This time I'm going to talk about passive scanning, uh, everything within LandSuper that's related to passive scanning, explain some of the terminology, but also give you a dashboard, obviously, as usual, some resources you can use to help with the passive scanning that we have and to make it a bit more visible and usable and more. Um, so to start off, we're going to do a bit of theory uh, where I'm going to explain some of the terms because they're often kind of used back and forth or you know, mixed. And, and you, you probably have seen some of these terms thrown around somewhere, the website or whether you've been in contact with uh, somebody at LandSweeper, you've heard the terms kind of used uh, throughout the, the conversations about passive scanning. Uh, but to start off, passive scanning itself, what is passive scanning? now? Uh, passive scanning really is just listening, basically. Um, it's where LandSuper just listens to the network, intercepts packets, and tries to get information out of it, unlike kind of the active scanning that we're most known for, which is really where we go out and fetch information itself. Now, for LandSuper, passive scanning comes in a couple of forms. Um, there's really one kind of feature that we, that we use for passive scanning, which we call uh, credential-free device recognition. But that kind of credential-free device recognition consists of basically two separate things that combined make what credential-free device recognition is. Uh, so to start off, another term that you probably heard is uh, asset radar. Now, asset radar is kind of the technology that we use to do the listening. It's where we select an interface on one of your scanning servers, and we listen to the network packets. Um, we intercept them, we check what's in there, um, grab an IP address, grab a MAC address, use that to then further enrich it um, and potentially scan the asset later on with the kind of the regular scanning that you're used to from LandSweeper. Um, then additionally, on top of that is where device recognition comes in. Now, device recognition is where we use um, kind of our device catalog to enrich the data that we've captured from the network. That means that we take the MAC address, um, we take information like the protocol that, that we've used or that we see in there, um, the message type. We use that to create kind of a unique device fingerprint, and we send that over to our device catalog, which is used then to kind of do a lookup and see, okay, using these different uh, metrics that we have, these, these different data points that we have, can we then kind of find what type of device it is? Can we recognize what type of device it is? Is it, you know, is it a switch? Is it, uh, you know, Windows? Is it a virtual machine? Those sort of things. Um, that's that's done by device recognition, and those two combined, so combining asset radar and device recognition, is what turns into then credential-free device recognition itself. Now, within LandSuper, um, there's plenty of settings that you can change there to kind of adjust how uh, credential-free device recognition works um, to enable device recognition, disable device recognition, enable asset radar, um, or like set it to a logging only mode where instead of just, uh, instead of kind of listening to the network, taking that information and creating assets out of it and sending it to the regular scanning queue, it just logs the information. So you kind of have just a log of what has been happening in your subnet. Um, so there's, there's plenty of configuration there that we're going to go into a little bit. Um, additionally, I also want to go over some of the resources that I created to create a, you know, as I've done in, in previous pro tips, uh, create a dashboard that kind of gives you a, a basic overview at least of Asset Radar, um, the current settings, and also the current results. So you have kind of that basic dashboard to kind of manage uh, Asset Radar and uh, credential-free device recognition as a whole. Uh, obviously, you can then add on to that and continue adding more things to the dashboards depending on your specific use cases. So let's head into LandSweeper and take a look there. So here within LandSweeper, um, I'm, I've started on kind of the credential-free device recognition dashboard that I've created, uh, but I'm going to come back to that later because first I want to head over to kind of the configuration parts. Now for Asset Radar itself, if you go to scanning, you'll find compatibility and settings under the Asset Radar submenu there, where you'll be able to kind of look at the settings that are there. One, first thing that you'll need to do is if you don't have it enabled yet, but you know, most people will, uh, because Asset Radar is something that is enabled by default. Um, so you'll see here that it should be enabled already. If it's not, um, you can always do a compatibility check and install the requirements uh, components that you need for Asset Radar. 
Um, and then you have an option of leaving this or setting this to enabled. It says here with asset creation. So this is really where the assets, or, you know, asset radar scans, grabs the info, sends it to the scanning queue, and then it tries to create asset or will create assets from them. Um, you have the logging only where it's just, as the name says, it's just a log. So you just have kind of a, a record of everything that's been going on on, your, on the subnet itself. Or you can just completely disable it if you don't, if you're not interested in it in it at all. Below that, you have the different interfaces. So these will be all the interfaces that are on your scanning server. Um, now for me, I have three of them here. Two of them are virtual ones um, and one actual one. So I've got that one enabled. Um, you can select here, obviously, which ones you want to enable or disable, depending on what your preference is. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Um, let's take a look at, I mentioned as well, the uh, device recognition. There's also a setting for that. That will be most likely under server options. So if I scroll down here, just below the proxy server settings is where you'll find the credential free device recognition setting or also known as the device recognition where you can if you want to disable it. This is the part, by the way, that uh, if you do not have your scanning server connected to the internet, it doesn't have any internet connection, this won't work anyway. Um, so you will need an active internet connection on your scanning server for that part, because that's where we do use um, the device catalog. We need to reach out to the device catalog to augment the data. Um, not only just, by the way, just, just for you to know, it's not only just asset radar data that's um, actually added there, it's also um, the regular assets. So if you do regular asset scanning, um, in case we don't have credentials for that asset, we still use, we still try and gather more information of it and enrich that data using a credential free device or using the device recognition itself. Now heading over to the dashboard that I've created. Um, by the way, if you want to grab any of these reports, um, they'll be available in the written version, so in the blog version as well. You can find that link below in or below the video. So you can head over there to grab the reports if you want to recreate this dashboard. Now going over this dashboard, um, the two widgets here on the right hand side are more just for status. Um, so if you want to see, okay, how many, which scanning servers do I have that are you know, asset radar compatible, enabled, um, is the device recognition enabled, um, you know, how long are my logs retained, those sort of settings. Uh, I've summarized those so that you can have an overview of all of your scanning servers and their status related to uh, credential free device recognition. Then below that, we have the asset radar interfaces. So depending on how many interfaces you have enabled, uh, all the ones that are enabled will show up there. Um, including kind of the, the interface zone IP, the kind of IP range that it's active in and the subnet, et cetera, um, as well. On the left-hand side here, just I'm gonna start below, um, an overview of all of the asset types that are scanned by CDR. Um, so you can have an overview of what has been happening more or less on the subnets that you've been uh, scanning with CDR. And then above that, uh, the asset radar log one is the default report. So that one should already be in your installation. That's just basically the kind of the default log. Um, then I've created a filtered version of that that shows the CDR scanned only devices, which means I'm gonna head into that, which means that these are just the devices that are only scanned um, by credential free device recognition. They have not been scanned by the regular LAN sweeper scan which means that basically this is all the information that we have on that. Um, if you set your asset radar to logging only, this will still be populated because this is basically what the log more or less would be if you set it to logging only. Um, so you'll see here that um, as I've mentioned before, um, you, we kind of grab as much information as we can and we enrich it. Um, so you'll see here that we have the device name, IP address, MAC address, and then kind of the MAC vendor, uh, the device brand, type, model, operating system. Those are all things that we've enriched using kind of the, the default that fingerprint that I talked about earlier um, to, to kind of get as much detail as we can uh, about a specific device without even needing any type of credential. Um, you'll see here as well that we have also which protocols you know, were used or, or were seen, how many packages that we receive, um, some other detailed information there as well. Um, so this is really kind of an overview of, of everything that has been 
connecting to the network that I've been at least uh, activating Asset Radar on. Now, just to go to the log itself, so I go to scanning Asset Radar logs. If you just go to the regular log, this is where you can have a combination of both devices that have been seen by Asset Radar and that have been passed on and actually scanned. You see that the ones that we have tried to scan and that have been, you know, has been created for them, you'll see that they have a link so you can actually go to those pages and take a look at them further. But you know, for most of these, unless you have credentials for them, they won't have that much more information. Um, it's just that then you'll have an asset page for them so you have uh, individual pages for them. Um, but that being said and done, um, I'm gonna head over to the kind of the last bit of this when I go back to the dashboard because um, I clicked away from this, but the alert report here, this is customizable. Um, so in case you're not familiar with the alert report widget, um, the config button there will let you basically create new pages for that widget. The one that I was using was here, the CDR one. Um, if I show the details, you can see here which reports I added into that. You can add all kinds of different reports in there as you, as you wish. Um, and that will just give you a, a basic count of you know, the results in that report. So um, I've used it for different scenarios as well. You can see here some of the previous episodes for error handling in an Explorer 11. Um, I still have some uh, dashboards in there as well for those. Um, but that being said, the last part of this is more about the actual usage of it, so use cases. Um, the most kind of advertised use case that we have on our website for this would be uh, rogue device detection. So ensuring that you kind of have this ongoing view of what is happening in your subnet. And as soon as a rogue device logs onto your network, you have then a record. You either have a, an actual asset of it, if you have asset creation on, or you at least have the log of what you know, that device actually connected and the basic information that we grab using credential-free device recognition. Um, another very useful use case for this would be to basically set up a scanning server in your wireless subnet. Um, seeing as wireless, more, more likely that random devices will try and connect to that or log on to that. Um, so that way you can keep an eye on everything that's connecting to your wireless networks. Um, and you can really kind of use that in case there is a breach, in case you know there is something weird going on. You can always check the logs. You don't even need asset creation enabled. You can just set it to logging only that you have that kind of uh, sense of security, that kind of backup method to just have a log of everything that's been going on in your wireless network. Um, so those really are kind of the main two use cases. Obviously, you know, whatever else you might want to do with it, um, you know, you can do whatever you want with it, obviously. Um, so yeah, that'll be it for this uh, edition of Pro Tips. And uh, I'll see you next time.